What's up, y'all? Got a banger from the Modern King. Let's get straight into it. Me watching him love the babies I had with someone else like they're his. Oh, what a simp, dude. Shot fired! Don't do that. No. What are you doing? Horrible. The fact that she felt comfortable posting that on social media For shows real. the state of our society. Horrible. Paternity fraud should be treated like a real crime mm. rather than an accidental mistake on the mother's right, that's end. That's wild. Bro. Sitting out here struggling to get this in my car. Men are walking back and forth. No one is trying to help me. They don't make real men anymore. Like, I'm sorry, I'm not all men, because they're they all good. They don't make real women anymore. Shots fired! And you ladies just expect us to be your hero. I can be your hero, baby. But the thing is, we're fed up. We're done. You wanted equality, you got it. Equal rights, equal lefts. Men out there, as a woman, like, you don't see men holding doors anymore. They don't help anymore. They rush and sit down on trains and buses before women and pregnant women and elderly are sitting down. It's just a hot mess out here. Well, man. Let me know what you think, chat. I think chivalry is dead, and I think women killed it. Let me know in the comments. What do you think? Because if you ladies wouldn't have such high standards and expect to be treated like children, we probably actually would have had some chivalry. It's always good to give something to someone when they don't expect it or they're not entitled. But nowadays, every woman is so entitled that the fact that you do something nice for them and they're like, as you should, you should do that. As you should. It's like, what? As I should. Who are you? I don't even know who you are. You're a runner. She's a runner. She's a track star. She's a random girl. I'm not going to pull out the red carpet for you. 40 years to build, seven years together, and now she wants half. Is that fair? You tell me if you think this is fair. I'm 40 years old. Okay. I married this woman when I was 33. Okay. After only knowing her seven months. And now I ain't get no prenup or none of that. But she didn't have nothing. Me, I had a one. Well, that's the thing. You married her after seven months. Stupid. Don't do that. $5 million house in Hoover, Alabama. Me, I had the Mercedes in the driveway. I went to law school. I was the one up studying all them late nights. Didn't even know who this woman was back then, right? Now, you mean to tell me, it took me 40 years to make all this, and this person who I've only known for seven years, seven, won't have of everything. It's not fair, but since it's a man that has to deal with it, it's not a problem, and Facts. nobody cares. Mm -hmm. I guarantee, if the courts treated women like they treat men, all we would hear is how unfair and sexist the court system is. Oh, for real. Well, if women didn't get half of men's stuff when they, when they, like after a divorce, I almost bet you women would stop divorcing men. If if after a if after a divorce, women were like, "You got to keep what you made. I got to keep what I made," and that was it. I almost biggity bet you that women would be like, eh, "I'm just gonna stay with him." I don't really need to go anywhere. I'll just stay with this guy. I almost bet you. But ladies get half of your stuff, even though they've been with you for seven years. But that's the thing, dude. Do not marry a woman if you've only known her for seven months. That's where he was wrong. Stupid. It was very dumb. Seven months is not long. I say a minimum of three years dating, and she needs to see you go through the mud. Ideally, you need to meet a woman where she doesn't know how much money you make. He probably met her when he was a lawyer, and she was like, oh, yeah, that's great. He's a lawyer. Yeah. I like lawyers. Most women love lawyers. But she needs to see you as if you're broke. She needs to fall in love with the emotional side of you, not the financial side of you. People are like, oh, men's mental health. Oh, men are afraid of being emotional. Because it's not that men are afraid of being emotional. So what is it they're afraid of? Then? Lady J. But they're afraid of being a woman. Um, what? Yeah, I don't think that's quite it. Men are Stupid. afraid of showing their emotions because they're socialized not to show emotions in public, which is true. But I don't think they're afraid of showing emotion. And why is that? Because men show emotions all the time. Can we have some examples? They're more likely to express their anger and lash out. Like, those are extreme emotions. So it's not that they're afraid of expressing emotions. It's that as a society, we have labeled certain emotions as feminine. So emotions such as sadness, like tears, or love, like caring for others, those are considered to be feminine traits. And those are Let me know, chat. What do you think? Do you think caring for others is a feminine trait? I don't think it has, like, a feminine or masculine. I think it's just called being an empathetic person. I think good leaders care about their people and care about the people they lead. So I, I don't I don't buy into that at all. The emotions that men reject. I don't believe it's rejection of those type of emotions. It's more like men oftentimes know the proper time and place to express such emotions, which is usually in private. Because they don't want to be feminine. Because the worst thing they can be is a woman. It has nothing to do with being perceived as being feminine. <laughs> is that the it worst does... thing you could be, chat? <laughs> is a woman? <laughs> I could think of a lot. I could think of a lot of things that'd be worse than being a woman. You know, being a pig out to slaughter. You know, that'd be that'd be that'd suck. Knowing that you're next, that'd suck. 
tests, however, have everything to do with being perceived as showing weakness, which has nothing to do with being feminine, unless, of course, one is trying to equate femininity with weakness. So when people are like, we should teach men to be more vulnerable, we should let them be more emotional. No, no, we should teach them to stop hating women. It's all about that talk about missing the mark it's really not about men hating women because in fact most men don't and that's not the what? reason why most men hating choose women? not to express their emotions in public but, but, uh, uh, chat we got a lot of men that watch we got a lot of men that watch let me know put a one in the chat if you hate women put a two in the chat if you love women personally i love women twos two in the chat for me um I was raised by a single mom. It was very hard on her, but she did it. I love Cass. I love women. I think women are great. But the thing is, the good women are hard to find. There's a lot of toxic women. There's toxic masculinity, toxic femininity. So if they're toxic on both sides, then maybe it's just you're a bad person. It's not necessarily toxic. You ever thought about it that way? I hate that they throw around the toxic masculinity stuff, but I love women. I don't hate them. I don't think any of us men hate women. We just, we hate what the women have become. We love the ladies. Hey, come on, ladies, we love y'all. But it's like the modern entitled women are the ones we don't like. It's because they have been taught to always be strong. So most men choose to express their emotions privately. A woman's value that she adds to a man is something that you cannot even put a price on, baby. It is something that you cannot even look at the amount. She is so masculine. Shots fired! The, the, the value that I have for you. What are you doing for me? You're probably only going to be interested in me if I have a business or some money. What are you going to add to my life? More headache and a bigger bill? Because guess what? What we're doing is we're elevating you and we're Pause. growing you in a, in a way that you could not even imagine. Pause. Every Why do you think that all Pause. the politicians are married? I built every single man up that I've ever been with, baby. All right. When they leave Pause. me, they're in a much better Pause. position than when my they got with so, me. And that's a so fact. The very last man you was with, when you, how long was that relationship? Three and a half years. When you met him, was he a millionaire? No. When you left him, was he a millionaire? No. You ain't made nobody nothing. A lot of these women talk about what they could do for a man and how good they are. Y'all ain't made nobody yes. nothing. A lot of y'all have an overinflated ego. You're not bringing nothing to the table but problems, attitude, and taint, tarnished, and zesty coochie. So what check your attitude. Is? No, check your attitude because y'all are not all that. Facts, dude. And dude, I had, um, so I interviewed Jake from Rattlesnake TV. Really cool guy. Um, really smart guy. Geo geopolitical streamer. You've probably seen him on the, the whatever podcast. Really cool dude. But anyways, he talked about, there's always like one point in a man's life where you have to have your ego killed or you have to kill your ego. And like for men, most of the time it's ages, you know, 18 to 24 is when you have to go through a lot of hardship. So you can realize that you actually need to be humble. You need to be humbled a little bit. So I think every man should go through that point in their life where their ego is killed. Because um, if you don't, you're going to go through life entitled. And I feel like a lot of women, they don't go through this. Whereas men, it's very regular for us. Oh my, watch out. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful about what? Be careful. Stir. Stir. More. More. You're going to let it burn. Stir. <laughs> I'm making sausage. Put some more oil. You need a little you bit of oil in there. You know how to make sausage? I mean, no, put some oil in there. A little bit of oil. I already put some in there. Put some oil in there. I already did. Put some oil in there. Too much. That's way too much. I didn't even get it. It's oh, it's gonna be greasy now. <laughs> way too much oil. Stir. Okay, Stir. You're gonna burn. I am stirring You're gonna burn. It. Some pepper in there. You need some pepper in there. I do that later. Put I some don't... pepper in there. Oh, it's too much pepper. Oh my god. Too much. What are you doing? This is what women do to us, and I don't think she even realizes it. The nitpicking. I call it the stacking of tasks. I don't know if you guys have ever had that. Loki, does somebody want to... Um, I've got... So, i got something else. One of you guys mentioned, like, a chicken foot or a chicken feet or something like that. So, this is what we're going with today. Chicken freaking feet from PetSmart. I'll give him one. Let's see what these smell like. Whew. Boy, those stank. Chicken foot. Loki, free. Sit. Wait. Free. Go to your place. Um, but I call it the compounding of tasks. When women tell you to do one thing, Cass will do this to me and she doesn't even realize it. She's like, hey, can you do this? And then can you do this? And then can you do this? And I'm like, hey, let me just go ahead and stop you there. Uh, which one do you want me to start with first? <laughs> How about I start with that one and then I'll move on to the next one. But when you throw five things at me, I need to know what you want me to do in order. Because if not, I'm just going to do them whenever I want. Why are you in here? Because you just need to listen. And why are you not stirring? You're going to mess it up. Baby, you're making why are you doing this? I, I don't know. Why don't why don't you? Hey, don't be nervous. Be at their service. 
what you're cooking. You're gonna you're gonna ruin the whole thing. You're not cooking. Not you, me, I am. Why are you doing this? Because I want you to know what it feels like when I'm driving. <laughs> oh, this one's gonna ruffle some feathers, but I'm gonna be completely honest. I mean that that's that's so true though. So what I'd like to know, in this dating world for people like over fifty, like have men just kind of given up with the trying We've to We've given up on the older women, yeah. Shots fired! In the the courting and the and all that. The short and sweet answer to your question is yes. Yes they have. They've given up, they're done, they're walking away. Is it so bad out there? Like that you guys have just given up? Be no, bad doesn't even begin to cover it. Yeah. Toxic, we could start with that. Because like everybody I talk to says they go out on a date and if the guy's buying dinner, then by the end of the night, he's saying, well, like if I buy dinner, then I expect to have sex. And there it is. Uh, yeah, Every it's a give and a take. Y'all wanted equality, honey. Come on now. If I'm paying for the date, I want to see what's going on after that date. We are expected to pay as men. So as ladies, y'all better give up the coochie. She's a runner, she's a track That's star. That's what we expect. Everybody you talk to, my gut feeling is, and I think it's obvious, oh. everybody means women. Yeah, Not single women, probably single moms. Single mom. Not men, women. And you're making assumptions based on what women are telling other women men are thinking, mm -hmm. instead of listening to men. First of all, as if, motherfuckers, like that ain't happening. Language. And there's that toxicity I mentioned earlier, as if. Your assumption is that that's what all men are thinking and wanting. That's not the reality, but that's what you're working from. That's the premise. So why would any man, a good man, ever put himself in that position when the first response you're going to have is as if? Are there cads out there, guys, who would do that? Sure there are, but they are few and far between. But that doesn't matter. What matters is you're going to apply that label to every single man. And then, of course, there's the other side of it. There's women who try and sleep with men on the first date, but we don't talk about them. We label all men. We like them. She's a runner. She's a track star. We appreciate. <laughs> I'm just playing, but for real, mother, for real, though, my dildo. But if you mention even one woman, it's but, but, but it's not us. It's not fair to label all of us like that. It's a huge double standard. And speaking of double standards. Okay, now if you put on your profile, I am not interested in a relationship, and if I buy you dinner, I would like to have sex at the end of the evening. Hey, good on you. Seriously. Bro, that would never freaking work. Chad, let me know. Would that ever work? That would absolutely never work. You could put that in your profile and no girl would be even open to that. Like, every girl, like, bro, this is what I would do when I was in college. You need to get every girl obsessed with you as quick as possible. You need to feed them everything that they want to hear. Because once again, I do things that get results. I don't do things that are necessarily moral or ethical. I do things that get me to the point where I want to get. I want to get to the cooch as quick as possible. At least this was in my heyday in college. So I did those things. I'd make a girl obsessed with me, tell them the things that they want to hear so I could go beat the cheeks. Now, if you're a nice guy, we've, we've seen in a lot of these videos, nice guys always finish last because women don't even want nice guys. They've said, oh, if a guy's too nice, that's weird to me. It's like, what? This is, you, you say in the long run, you want a nice guy, but then a guy's nice from the jump and then you're like, uh, ew. Like it makes absolutely no sense. So us as men, we do things that get results. So if you're mad at that, stop letting us get the results from the bad behavior. <laughs> but we just do things that work. You actually think guys would do that? Some guys might. Not the guys you want, or is it? Because the guys that would do that, they're the ones with the six-figure incomes, mm -hmm. the six-pack abs, the six-inch you-know-what. And they do that because they can. It's the mark they, of the beast, 666. They know women will respond to that. The mm -hmm. average decent guy, the ones you claim you want, the ones you reject out of hand because they don't fit the sixes, they're not going to post something like that because that's not their expectation. Oh, I love puppies and picnics in the park. And then you take somebody to dinner and you pull that shit. Well, you know what? You're just a dumbass. And there's the final clue for you. <laughs> you assume that all guys are like that. So therefore, all men are dumbasses. Why would any man want to date someone who thinks? That? I mean, that's facts. I like this man. Uh, that's the guy from Men Need to Be Heard. Um, he's he's very, very good. He's He's funny. He's also super based, and it's always good to, to have you an are. older gentleman to listen to and learn from. Um, I highly urge checking out his content. You are. I'm not accepting illegal service from you. He can have it served properly by a Connecticut state marshal. 
It was served properly. No, it's not. No, it's not. Sorry that he's too. Sorry that he's too much of an idiot that he doesn't know how to properly serve something. The court specifically gave instructions. The court tells you it is your. It says it right on the paperwork. It is your duty to give it to a Connecticut state marshal. Has to serve in hand. She's cooked. Go girl, go. Go girl, go. Go girl, go. Go girl, go. Got her little Delulu friends gassing her up. This order is not in effect until it is properly served. It was never properly served. I was never even notified about it until they come and tell me. Miss, this is your copy, all right? <laughs> the father's not in New York. Nobody lives in New York. I think this is, um, she's going to get arrested after, like, committing paternity fraud. New York has no jurisdiction. Get this away from me. Okay. Okay. That's not mine. I'm not taking any service from you. You're not a state marshal in Connecticut. Okay. Only Connecticut state marshals can serve that properly, and you have to serve me with the original. Okay. And you did it. Well, Imagine. this is like they're they're basically causing trauma to my child right now. Okay, man, here's your copy of this yeah, it has nothing to do with you. None of the decisions you've made up to this point have anything to do with this. Yeah, it's, it's all their fault. You're not allowed to serve me. Okay. This is the form that we did serve you. If you want to keep it for your own records, you can. Okay? To give context, she lost custody. And I assume she tried to leave the state or country because she's at an airport. Hmm. But since she's not above the law, like she thinks she is, they don't allow her to leave and serve her papers. So you were behind my back? Yeah. I'm grown. I'm old enough now. I feel like I got the right to do that. So I just wanted to get... Attorney fraud, 18 years and absolutely no accountability. Test and see what is my daddy. And so you called him? Yeah, I called him. He was like, um, he thought I was his son. <laughs> so that means that... I don't, we don't see nothing funny. Nah, 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 nah. Cause Cause he, nah cause but but see, I told you that was your dad. I, 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 first, of all, first of all, that is your dad. I don't know what's going on. I, I don't know who you took the test with. And what you had going on, but that, that's your dad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It sounds good, but look. I'm just saying. Sounds, but the thing is, the lie detector determined that was a lie. Oh! <laughs> nah, that's the result. The result will say what it say, now. Nah. I, I, I can't lie. I can't fake no results. Now, if you had something going on, then the man that was my daddy. Brutal. She's a runner. She's a track star. When you find out your mom's a 304. <laughs> feel bad for the kid. First of all, you didn't have to be behind my back. That's what you didn't have to be doing. I love yeah. it. It's always a sign. Shame, insult, guilt, and the need to be right. Even when confronted with the truth, still avoids accountability. Yeah, but I just feel like I ain't had no bond with him like that. Like, I knew something was off. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I wanted to go get my results. Hey, good on this young man. <laughs> Good on this young man for going and doing the adult thing, because dude, here's the thing: when I was when I was 21, um, I'll give you some backstory. My parents divorced when I was 11. My dad was a druggie, you know, did hard drugs, coke, meth. You know, I don't know if he shot up heroin or anything like that, but weed. He sold weed. You know, I remember my dad told me when I was six years old. He's like, "Son, I sell pot." I was like, "What the hell is pot?" I don't even know what that is. What is you sell pots and pans? You sell, you know what I mean, Tupperware. Anyways. At 11 years old, they get divorced, and then from 11 to 21, I'm just told repeatedly my dad's a piece of shit, you know, he's my sperm donor, blah, 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 like, it was just, he was never painted in a good picture to me from my mom. Um, but then one day, I was like, you know what, I saw, I saw a quote from Danny Trejo, Ripley's Believe It or Not, and he said, what you can't forgive, you eventually become. The quote is, what you can't forgive, you eventually become. You know, I took it to heart and I said, you know what, if I never forgive my dad for not being there and, you know, being abusive to my mom because he was physically abusive, um, then maybe I'll turn out like this guy. So I called him when I was like 20, 21. I called him again when I was like 24, but I called him when I was like 21. I was like, you know what, hey, I forgive you for what you did. And he's like, son, I'm so sorry. I should have called you. Um, he still felt bad. But the thing is, you, at a certain point, have to become a man enough to go, you know what? If you're in a single family household like that, like a single mom or something, you have to reach out to your dad and say, you know what? I forgive you for what you did. 
let's try to build this bond because it's certain at a certain point it becomes your responsibility as an adult to nurture the relationships you have in your family that you deem is important you know when you were a kid all the relationships you had like from your family was just like kind of forced on you but then as you get older it's up to you to hold up those, tra those traditions and so for me i was like all right now it's my time to shine if i want to have a relationship with my dad because eventually he's not going to be here it's up to me to do that so that's what i did um and so good on this young man for doing that i applaud him um because i think every young man if your dad is out of your life and your mom paints your dad as the as the villain in your in your upbringing then it's up to you to go figure out was he really the villain because there's always two there's always three three sides to a story his story, her story, and the truth. And so for me, a lot of the things that I talked to him about got, got me some clarification on some of the things that actually did happen, which well, there were some discrepancies. So it, it was interesting to see and interesting to learn. And see what's going on. Let me tell you something. It's oh, okay. she's gonna gaslight him. You know, I'm, she's I'm old enough, I understand. Now, if, he ain't, if, if my real dad ain't want to take care of me, you know what I'm saying? And, and, and it See, was... some things are better left unsaid. Oh, okay. You should just oh, some for... things are just better not left unsaid. No, no, it's not how it goes, honey. I ain't tell you. I told you that was your daddy. You should have went right on with it all these years. You 18 years old, 19 years old now. You ain't, it's no sense trying to go behind her back and figure it out. You too old now. So after she gets caught lying to her son Brutal. and the other men for over 18 years, she wants to play victim mm -hmm. and act like he's the one in the wrong for seeking out the truth. Unreal, bro. A man came up to me on the subway to ask for my phone number. Well, it looks like there still are some guys approaching women. He should have just asked for a dollar at that point. He would have gained more from that conversation than that. Oh, dear. It doesn't sound like it went very well, does it? He had the audacity to be like, wait, hold up. Do you have a boyfriend? Because I don't talk to girls in relationships. Wait, that's a bad thing that he asked? That's being How so? respectful. What are you even talking about? I don't talk to men who aren't competitive, okay? If you can't fight, just say that. Wow. And here. <laughs> is this. What is this? Be competitive? <laughs> oh my god, respect has just gone out the window. I thought it just sounded like the guy was being respectful. Stop trying to act like you're a good person. You're not a good person. You're approaching a woman alone on the subway. You're a terrible human being. Wait, what? Wow. Why not be like, what's your boyfriend's address? Let me kill him with my bare hands and then take you out for dinner. Um, hmm. Romance. Learn it. Well, doesn't that sound like the beginnings of a very Dude, I love it. That's why, dude, these women watch, like, like these movies, like The Notebook. It's literally about cheating. They read these smut books and, like, Cass reads some of these smut books, and then she tells me about them. Like, bro, this is some of the most toxic behavior, and this is what gets you guys off? You guys are twisted. Chip. Men don't know how to talk to women nowadays. And a lot of women really don't seem to know what they want either. And they seem to have gotten their ideas of what romance actually is from a novel that they picked up at the grocery store. For real. Where are the men who would wake up just so they could be the man who wakes up next to you? Well, I'm sorry to have to break it to you, but those men, they've already woken up and they've left. Because you see, men have now realized there's no real benefit to waking up next to you. We've seen that while you demand, demand, demand things from us, you offer little to nothing in return. At Thanks. least not anything we can't already get without involving ourselves in a relationship with you. And mm -hmm. on top of that, for decades now, y'all told us you didn't want us. Y'all told us you didn't need us. We heard you. And now we're off making a better life for ourselves. One that doesn't involve you. Would we like to have a great relationship? Sure, who wouldn't? But men have finally figured out that the risk simply isn't worth the yeah, reward the anymore. The juice ain't worth the squeeze, buddy. And now that you guys are figuring out that we figured it out, well, now you're wondering, where did all the men go? And then there's this. Like, where are the men who would walk 500 miles? And 500 miles. Oh, yeah, I've seen this clip. I've seen this clip a few times. Um, let's skip ahead. In hell, I'm singing that <laughs> god-awful song. She looks, she, looks like, <laughs> she looks like a create your character on Roblox. Got fired! Um of expensive dates only to get ghosted shortly thereafter no longer dealing with the ridiculous expectations oh sorry higher standards that you've all set ladies i'm sorry to tell you but men didn't create this situation you did but facts so all right, there's preaching. a few things that i don't do as a married woman number one i do not cook for my husband what I it's god Cass is cooking right now it smells so good you don't cook for your man cook for my children my husband will be making his own breakfast lunch and dinner number two i do not help him pay any bills so 
You don't cook and you don't pay any bills. What? It, this is just being a dependipotamus. <laughs> If he is short on the rent, on utilities or anything like that, it is not my problem. I will not be helping him out. His job is to provide for his family. So I am not financially contributing to any of the bills. Number three, I do not do his laundry. I have my own- Cass does all my laundry. Laundry and my children's laundry to do. So he could do his own. I won't help him put it away. I won't help him fold anything. Like he, That's his responsibility. Number four, he is responsible for replacing any of his essentials like soap, shampoo, anything like that. He needs Bro, to I, I, I don't go to the grocery store anymore. Bro, these modern women have lost their way. Literally everything she's mentioned, I, I get the opposite. Cass does all the cooking and cleaning. Cass goes to the grocery store constantly. I don't go. Um, she does all the laundry, puts up my laundry. Like what, it, like, what is even the point of being in a marriage if he doesn't get any of those things? And the thing is, she's mid at best. Like she, looks, she looks like Sid from Ice Age's cousin. Like she looks okay. We'll buy it himself. Even if I'm at the store, I will not be replacing it for him. If he needs new underwear, new socks or anything like that, that's for him to bro, do. Bro, this is wild. This new generation of women is truly lost, bro. Truly lost, bro. That's unreal. Um, so I checked the Reddit today. If you guys want to uh, post videos for me to react to, please post it in the Reddit. It seems like their server's messed up or something. It wouldn't let me actually look at things. But um, don't forget to cop the ebook, The Four Pillars of Personality. Makes you irresistible to women and respected by men. But I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. Loki ran out there with uh, Cass because she's cooking, and he's like, mm, that smells good. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.